Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Carmoon we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more, but today I'm going to be talking about the MacBook Pro 2020, so let's uncover it right now. I've had this model for about two weeks now and I've used this primarily as my everyday laptop for video editing and obviously everyday tasks and I thought it was about time that I did a review on this machine. I will go through some of the specs, the differences between this and the base model MacBook Pro that you might not have realized as well as some benchmarks and real world tests. So be sure to watch it right to the end as I'll tell you if it's worth the extra money or if it's worth firstly going for this rather than the base MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro I have here is the 10th generation i5 model with the 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory and the 512 gigabytes of SSD. Just to let you know, you aren't able to upgrade any of the parts later on. So be sure to spec your MacBook Pro with exactly what you want because you're not going to be able to upgrade this later down the line. This model will set you back £1,800 which is an extra £500 over the base model. So what do you actually get for that extra money? Firstly, you get the 10th generation i5 processor over the 8th generation i5. You also get the G7 graphics, which is up to 80% faster than what's found on the base model. You get an extra 8 gigabytes of newer DDR4 RAM, which is clocked faster as well and you get extra 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. So as you can tell, there are some good sort of spec upgrades that you get for your extra 500 pounds, but what else do you get? Well, internally, there are some more differences between this and the base model. Firstly, you get two fans and two cooling slots, which helps to improve airflow and the way that the speakers work compared to the base model. You don't get this with the base model because it only has one fan and it has no additional cooling vents or speak events. This, in my experience, means that this MacBook Pro stays cooler in the same task and the fans actually sounded less irritating at its maximum speeds. And it's very rare that this MacBook Pro as well will ramp up its fans at its maximum speeds, whereas the base model I found was more likely to do so. You also get four Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack, meaning that you can live that dongle life and and have them all plugged in on either side. For me, the thing that I love most about having four ports on the MacBook Pro 2020 is that I can choose which side I can charge my MacBook Pro depending on my setup. Also, the 1800 pound model actually has a better speaker system, meaning that it not only sounds better and cleaner than the MacBook Pro model, but it actually, in my opinion, also gets a little bit louder as well, which to be honest, Apple actually never mentioned that in their specs. Just to let you know, here is a speaker test of this MacBook Pro because it is really, really good. One thing that's the same is the webcam quality. Now, if this is the same, pretty much the same webcam as what we've seen for many, many years, but they have actually improved the microphone, which is quite funny because in my personal opinion, um, I never actually cared too much about the webcam quality, well, before all of this quarantine, but now that I'm doing a lot more video calls on my MacBook, I actually care about it quite a bit more now. Hopefully Apple will update this in 2021. So as you can tell, not the best webcam. The microphone quality is okay, but if you don't do a lot of video calls or anything like that, then I wouldn't really uh, stop yourself from buying this model as the microphone is absolutely fine for voice calls and yes, okay, the webcam isn't brilliant, but don't let this stop you from buying a new MacBook because to be honest, no matter which MacBook you go for, it's gonna be the same scenario. Both MacBook Pros are heavier and a bit thicker than last year's model, but I actually prefer this as it gives the internals a little bit more room to breathe, I, I think, allowing for better cooling. And I think this also helps with the speaker quality too. The reason for the extra thickness, just to let you know, is because of that new Magic Keyboard, which can I just say, I know it's been mentioned like a million times, but this keyboard is probably the best keyboard on a laptop. This keyboard actually ditched 
ditched the butterfly keyboard, which was found on the last four years in favor of going back to the old scissor switch mechanism, which they've kind of refined in this new Magic Keyboard. I write a lot and I'm definitely not a typist, but this keyboard feels amazing. Now, just to let you know, this has one millimeter of travel with relatively low pressure to activate the keys, which means that it is really enjoyable to type on. The touch bar is nice to have and it does have its uses, but it's not something that I would particularly miss if they got rid of it, just like when they got rid of like the force touch or force press on the iPhones. The touch bar was pretty much viewable at any angle that I had my laptop on, which is really important. Now here is a type test for those who want to know obviously what the keyboard is like. The screen is stunning as always. Even though it's the same screen that we've seen for the last few years, it still holds up today. It has a resolution of uh, 2560 by 1600, which has a PPI of 227, has 500 nits of brightness and the wide P3 color gamut, which means that it can display more colors than what's found on, let's say, the MacBook Air. Either way, I will be doing a comparison between this model and the MacBook Air, so be sure to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see that fun video. Using this laptop without any power connected, I got about seven to eight hours of light use, which is really good from this sort of pro machine. And I was using it for sort of things like emails and web browsing. So, you know, for you guys, if you're gonna be doing that sort of thing, then this laptop is definitely gonna last you a whole day's worth of work pretty much without having to plug it in, which is super impressive. However, when I was using this with Final Cut Pro without power, I would say that the laptop only lasted about three to four hours, which is quite a considerable drop. Now, Apple claims up to 10 hours of sort of web usage, which is not far off what I got. And I mean, if you were to use things like Safari and turn down the brightness, I think that you might get very, very close to that. So let's talk about some of the benchmarks and real world tests so that you guys know exactly how how this handles with different types of workloads. And I know that you guys find these tests really useful. Firstly, here is the Cinebench score, which was 1,905. And then the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test was pretty consistent at about 2,300 on the right and about 2,000 for the read, which is plenty fast, especially if you're doing things like video editing on it, on the drive itself. Now in Nova Bench, this gives us a great indication of the entire system. And as you can see, this score is really, really good. Testing the graphics card in Unigen Valley, you'll see a score of 1,516 with a with an FPS of about 36, which really isn't that bad. I mean, if you did that same test on the MacBook Pro base model, you'd actually see a score much lower than this. And this is because of its new G7 graphics. So if your workloads are more graphics intensive, like video editing, for example, then definitely, this model will handle it a lot better. Going into some real world tests, Final Cut Pro X played 4K 8-bit footage absolutely fine in high quality. And even once you did a couple of grades and LUTs on it, it played very, very smoothly. Once you started adding some motion VFX uh, tracking titles, it did start to drop frames. However, if you drop the quality down to better performance, it played absolutely fine. Now, I have been having some issues with Final Cut Pro crashing, if I'm completely honest, but I think this is more of Apple's problems with Final Cut Pro and them not updating it since these 10th generation processors have been added. So hopefully we'll see an update to Final Cut Pro very soon. Those of you who are interested in Final Cut Pro editing primarily, I did do a separate video on this, so I won't be diving deep into that as the video that I did on this definitely talks a little bit more and shows you a lot more on how this performs in Final Cut Pro. Now we all know that Chrome is hard on MacBooks. So here is a Chrome test running with a screen recording and playing 4K video. Now, as you can see, the temperature did go up to around 80 degrees and stabilized at around that temperature. And the CPU clock did average at around 2.4 gigahertz, which is a pretty good example of how things should perform with normal tasks. So if you did things like watching videos and then had a couple of applications open in the background, 
then this is the performance that you should see when you're using this laptop. For those of you who didn't know, you can't actually play 4K YouTube videos in Safari unless you buy the Safari extension for $1.99 as Apple doesn't actually support Google's 4K encoder in Safari. So is this worth 1800 pounds? And if so, who is this for? Well, if you compare this model to last year's model, you get an extra $400 of upgrades for the same money. So that is phenomenal value when you're actually comparing it to last year's model. Plus the fact that you get uh, the new Intel processor, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, great speakers, and a great cooling system, especially compared to the base model. I think that this is a really good model to go for. Plus, if you were gonna go for the base model and then upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM and the 512 gigabytes of storage, then it's only an extra sort of $200 or pounds for this model, which for those additional upgrades, is definitely worth it. So I've obviously spoken about how this model for me is really good, but does this mean that you should go out and buy this model over, let's say the base one? You shouldn't buy this model if you don't use things like Final Cut Pro on a regular basis, like I'm saying two to three times a week. Also, if you only use your MacBook Pro for internet surfing, office use, basic photo editing, uh, or things like uh, web coding, or for example, Logic Pro, so like music production, then I would actually say that in those use cases, the base model would actually perform very close to this model, and you would actually save yourself 500 pounds or dollars. I think that this model here, from my tests and uses, is actually most suitable for video editors who are looking for a small portable machine compared to, let's say, the 16 inch. Also, I would recommend this machine if you are doing anything like game development, compiling programs, machine learning, 3D rendering, or doing financial or scientific modeling, as these programs are very graphics intensive and you would benefit from the G7 graphics in this model. In my opinion, it's not worth upgrading to the i7 or anything else for that matter, except for let's say the SSD storage if you wanted a little bit more headroom to work with. Otherwise, you're dangerously close to that 16 inch MacBook Pro, which will perform better in all of those tasks for your money. If you aren't doing any of those things that I've spoken about, then go for the base model as you'll be more than fine with it and skip this one and save yourself a little bit of money. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on whether you agree or disagree with any of my points. And also drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and check out the links in the description below if you wanna support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Also subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more and check out these fantastic videos that I made myself if you want to see more from me. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.